hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a good weekend morning if you're watching this when it goes up, or at any time you're watching, I hope you're doing well. Don't mind me, I was just a bit floored uh, by a certain movie that came out this weekend. Man, was that just excellent, excellent. Uh, I hope to talk more about it in the future. This is also a quick plea uh, to bring back Disney Infinity, at least the toy line, because this is still the best figures they've ever had for The Incredibles characters. Uh, so for the critiques this morning, our sixth installment, uh, we have both Casey and Sam. Of course, if you want a critique of your own, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen and support the channel in return. Uh, of course, these critiques are meant for the people specifically in the videos, but there's always something that we can learn from looking at other people's art. Hey there, Casey, how's it going? Uh, thank you so much for being a patron. I think at one point you were a Lamb of Liberation tier patron. Really appreciate that a lot. Uh, so for other folks who are watching this now that I've been doing the more uh, public weekly critiques, uh, people have been asking to actually see the accounts, uh, the people that are being featured in the critiques. So here, uh, Crocka Lobster is Casey on Instagram if you want to check out more of her work. So uh, what I have here is I've, I've assembled a little bit of your work, um, and I've kind of broken it down into two categories, uh, one of them being line work here. Uh, this is uh, art that you've drawn that's primarily made of lines, even though this one's a little bit more lineless, the, the sketch is still present. Um, and then some stuff that's mainly your paint work, which is I know what you're kind of struggling with and, and sort of hoping to, to round out and improve on. So first of all, with this work here that's that's visible, this is really, really nice work. Like you obviously don't have a problem uh, with line work and you're, you're very comfortable with it and everything. Um, one thing that I, I noticed here, um, this is just a, a color thing. It's a bit of an aside, um, but the coloring looks almost like uh, he, the character has like a multiply layer of red, like sort of a if I did this, right, um, and uh, set this to a multiply, if I use this red color up in the upper right-hand corner, um, you can see how it would kind of start darkening, right? And that's kind of what it looks like over here on your character here. What I'd like to see um, either is like a sort of a subtraction or a cutting away um, from that that multiply, if that's actually what you have set here, or, or using something like that, or um, just using a little bit of like a, um, a yellow glow, um, because this is like a, this is already a nice, we still have multiply, yeah. It's already well constructed and you know, like the, everything is, is here, um, but we're not quite getting, it's basically just missing its highlights, right? And so if we started coming in and adding light like this, I won't get, too crazy into this, but uh, just as sort of a, a demonstration. I was lighting here, right, and then kind of cut away right there. The same here and here. So now we take this layer that we have, um, and it can be it could be any kind of number of, of layers. We can try overlay or like even color dodge a little bit. So if we went to overlay there. Um, that's not bad, right? But let's let's try like a, this add layer and, and crank it down a little bit to like 25%. And now you're starting to get like more of the definition of your character. And it's like just the final steps there with that. Okay. So line work looking really nice. Um, this is the only time people always online are asking or saying that things remind them of Stitch. This is the only time that I'll say that someone else's art reminds me of Stitch. Let's move into um, your paintwork here. Um, so, like, keeping everything that we see here in mind, let's look at the paints. So, we've got two examples here. There's some more that you have on your um, Instagram. And primarily, what seems to be the, the issue that you're having, um, and I included the sketch here uh, on the side of this initial painting, um, one of the, the main things that I'm seeing is your colors and the values, really, of your paintings um, are muddy. I think the idea is a muddiness probably comes across, right? Um, if it's not clear, really just because there's a lack of information um, from as far as light and value 
in your drawing, uh, there's a lot of gaps to fill in, right? So here's here's kind of what I'm I'm sort of assuming is your process, and, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but somewhere along the lines of you start with a sketch like this that has a pretty good amount of detail, right? Um, but it's only just the outline, right? It's just the the line work is just an outline, and then from there you're going in and and filling in kind of everything, and then from there because there aren't um, there isn't a huge change in the values, the lightness and darkness. Um, you go in and kind of just starting start uh, blending really soft uh, colors and everything around. Um, and that's something that's that's interesting with your work is that there's no lack of detail, right? There's a really nice amount of detail work. There's one painting that you have there of like kind of a skull shape that has a, a very nice amount of texture to it. Um, but the the issue coming across is the planes of the drawing. So that's that's like the flat um, or, or like angled pieces and shapes together. Um, something that happens a lot with line work is if you're moving from line work to painting, uh, lines do a lot as far as defining things for us, right? So we don't necessarily um, need to to know like you know planes of the face and stuff to to get by. We could sort of cheat without them. Very useful to know them and everything. Um, but then when you remove the lines and start uh, it, it, trying to define shapes, it's very important to have a value structure, right, of, of lights and darks. And something along the lines of like making sure that you have, um, I, I think what would be helpful for you is, is uh, constructing your painted uh, characters very sharply, right? So you're you're going to construct them out of like very boxy, angled shapes first, um, and then you're going to do the same when you go on to painting and rendering. You're going to use very um, like harsh shapes, right? Um, you're not going to worry about how how blended it is and everything, right? Like this is this is a a white, which is a little bit difficult to see, um, because that's you can always go back and smooth things down later, um, but it's helpful first to have like those really stark uh, contrasts um, and and value and contrast go hand in hand uh, as and contrast helps you lose the muddiness. Um, and I think what what happens is like this painting here uh, ends up looking well because you have um, a scene that's very monochromatic, right? And that kind of helps the muddiness. And then up here you have a painting that is very dark, and so there's a lot that you don't necessarily need to define. Um, not at all like calling this work bad or or or, or anything like that. It's just um, the clear issue that you're you're facing, um, especially considering, you know, how stellar your line work is, right? And and that's you're just kind of in a growing phase, growing pain phase uh, with your work. Um, so yeah, keeping those things in mind. Uh, that you still need to uh, define things, whether it's with shapes of color, uh, lights and darks. Um, I would definitely try and move, like take a sketch like the one that you have here, maybe go for even a little bit more detail, not necessarily like finished detail, but uh, construction detail, like um, making sure that you, you know very clearly sort of what the structure of this neck is and everything on a, on a, construction level, right? What, what, how many cubes and rectangles it, it's comprised of, stuff like that. Um, because from there, you know, it's, it's this similar with the planes of the face. Once you know, like, you can, once you know what the planes of the face are, you have the confidence to really cut in, you know, sharp, uh, cheek shapes and sharp, uh, eyebrow shapes and stuff like that. Um, so otherwise, you kind of have the, the timidness, which then leads to the soft shading, which leads to the muddiness. So really looking forward to seeing where you go from here. I, I totally understand this stage that you're in. Um, I've totally been here before. There's a lot of ways that your art is just amazing, um, and especially this older stuff. Uh, so I just want to encourage you to kind of keep pushing through that stuff and getting really, like, before you move on to textures or detail or even color. Uh, just keeping your stuff black and white and adding a little bit of grayscale as it goes. All right, Casey, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing where your work goes in the future. Take care. Hey, Sam, how's it going? 
so for anyone else who's who ends up watching this or seeing it, uh, Sam and I have done a, a couple of one-on-ones before. Um, Sam's like been a big support to the channel. I've been following his work for a while now. So we've got a lot of ground that we've uh, kind of been covering as far as where his art is at. Um, so Sam, your biggest project right now that you've been working on is called uh, Cattails here. And I pulled mainly uh, just art from Cattails for this critique um, and, and focusing on that specifically, um, mainly because I really like this idea and, and sort of where you're going uh, with these characters. Um, I'm excited to see the work that you're doing. I know that you're kind of midway through or you've you've already done some extensive like story work and maybe even some comic pages already. So um, changing the character designs at this point, uh, I know is is a lot to ask. Um, but full, like full disclosure, the the appeal video that I made this week uh, about what is appeal in character design was actually largely inspired by sort of my preparation work uh, with your characters here, just because there's like so much to like about them to a point where it's like it's been nagging me a little bit. Um, and it's been like kind of a fun exercise to kind of explore where to make changes and everything. Um, because they're, these characters are, are like almost there, right? Um, and there's just a couple of things that that kind of I, I thought I would suggest as improvements. Um, and so I won't be doing any drawovers during this because I've already done them. Um, I did them ahead of the video. Uh, and I will preface this by saying this is not; these are not redesigns of your characters. Um, these are like my takes incorporating some ideas that I have. Um, but the key thing is going to be you taking these ideas and carrying them back into your own work and your own style and sort of visual aesthetic and stuff. Uh, adopting a phrase uh, from my friend John Lauren, uh, which is like this but better uh, when referring to like a change. So like obviously you're more invested in this and you'll have the time to kind of uh, dig a little bit deeper into the things that I'm suggesting. Um, so the main thing talking about appeal, appeal is this sort of the, the flow between shapes is kind of how I described it in the video, although there's a lot more to it than that. It's it's kind of the the appeal is making something non-threatening, making it, you know, sort of dynamic in a, a, a visually appetizing way, right? Um, and there's a couple of places within your characters here where you're a little bit stuck between like a dynamic, let's say like sort of traditional looking either comic character or like Disney character and um, a more graphic one. So take, for example, like a Sanrio, like Hello Kitty, very graphic simple shapes, right? And there's not so much going on uh, where you're worried about like the depth or dimension to the character, right? Because they're very obviously flat and things like that. But um, there's a few places where with your characters, we get flat shapes where it would be really nice to have more three-dimensional ones. Um, so let me just show you a few things. Um, Another area with appeal that has nothing to do with face or anything like that is just sort of the flow um, and variation in, in certain shapes, like uh, Jack's legs here. Um, I really like this original drawing that you did. I don't know if you specifically meant for it to be Jack at that time, and I think a, a few of the elements that you changed between these two versions uh, was to carry some over to Basil or Basil. Um, so I understand, like, the, you know, the hat and, and things have kind of moved over, but I, I really do like this version a lot. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that the legs here, instead of being half and half, like right now they're distributed in a very 50%, 50%, or really kind of like 40% and the top of the boots as far as shape segments, um, this version up here, this is very two-thirds blue coat, one-third uh, boots, which is a little bit like more imbalanced. All right. So again, talking about what I said, uh, not redesigns like this, but better. Here is quickly a few things that I, I came up with, uh, with your characters here. So over here, starting with Mari, um, let's fix this. I must've moved the layer at some point. So what it would be nice to see is just a little bit more, uh, arcing, right? in the body of the character. And so I've, I've rounded things, bent that, that midsection a bit more. Um, and I've also just defined certain shapes as being 
you know, as overlapping, right? Instead of just being, uh, although you, you've done it too, uh, I'm just making it more severe, where sort of the, the connection between the blue, yellow, and red there is more, uh, more separated, right? Um, and one of the things specifically with Mari here, again, going back to those flat shapes, is that everything on the face here reads as a very, as a single plane, right? It's just like everything is, is on this flat square. And so what I was doing with her, um, the main change that I was adding was basically just this muzzle shape, right? And even if you don't go this extensive, uh, you know, at least adding just a little bit of overlap where the eye is not visible because of the muzzle, right? Um, humans have the same thing with the nose. Uh, it's just, you know, a muzzle's a little bit different with animals. Um, another thing, too, is you, that you had, like, kind of a focus on is, is the, the circle, uh, square, and triangle shape language, um, which is cool. And I, I can definitely see how you were trying to build that into these characters. So I, I came up with a suggestion, um, and it might make a little bit more sense. Um, here's a couple of breeds of cat. Uh, you have the Scottish Fold here that, that has this obviously they're not square, but it's a very squarish look to the, the ears. Um, I tried a version of Jack with that and it, he ended up looking just a little bit like kind of depressed, at least with my first sketch. And obviously he's supposed to be a little bit more stoic and serious. Um, this is just a, an ear. I don't know the breed of this cat, uh, or this one. Um, but this, see, you've got, you've got like the round shape of ear here. And then this one, the triangle is kind of accented by the tufts, right? And so that's what I was doing with Mari uh, up here. My iPad is dying on me. There we go. So yeah, just little ear tufts. Um, here's two different ideas I came up with. Basil, uh, one being a sort of, you know, the the round shape kind of coming down into a neck, a uh, like a taper, and one where he was actually like heavier set. Um, and that's kind of what I came up with this, with these, just, these were very quick, these sketches here. Um, but just a little bit of a, I, I especially like kind of putting Basil next to Mari, uh, with these shapes, just because there's a, there's a key difference between them, right? You, you get, got a lot of variance. Um, and I think that's something I'd like to see just a little bit more of too, is variation between these characters. Um, with Basil, his eyes specifically here, um, part of appeal, like round eyes are great. But if you just have perfect circle eyes, it's going to be, there, there's an aspect of it that's just a little bit unsettling, right? Um, it's, uh, it's unnatural, really. And when we're basing our, our eyes off of either creatures or other humans, there's always going to be an element of uh, lids or something that's changing the shape of the eye to either be more almond-like or even just um, part of the the domino right of the, the domino mask of the face just kind of changing right because the, the perfectly round eye uh, there's a expressionlessness to it right so that's just something I was I was messing around with um, and I I think with with him if you want to kind of convey a bit more eagerness it's cutting into the bottom of that round shape right um, and I also did something here with this version of, of Jack was, it's an attempt, right? I was trying to think along the lines of what other characters are very strong and, uh, have very square shape language. Kronk was an idea I came up with who, it, like, he's very appealing despite his, his square shape language, right? Um, so again, I, I'll go back to, I, I prefer your version of, of Jack, your older take on him especially to mine, but, but one of the things I was accentuating with him was this sort of the nose shape on cats that, that, uh, you know, kind of this trapezoid shape between the eyes, which is a little bit different from ours, uh, just because of the way that affects the, the eye shape on the, the edges there. Um, and these, the sort of tufts, right? Uh, Mari has a, a bit of a, a triangular shape to the bottom of her jaw, uh, square and round for the, for these guys. And the tufts, I, I sort of thought like, okay, with hers, she's a little bit more, you know, the balanced middle ground type character to the other two. Um, Basil's here are actually pointing up, right? And Jack's just like no part of it pointing down. 
all of that is me kind of projecting a bit of, of what I already see with these characters and trying to push uh, aspects of the personality that I'm reading or, or kind of seeing because you wrote them in uh, on top of them. If it doesn't it ring true to your characters, then that's fine. You know, that's something for you to change. Um, anyway, overall, that's some stuff that I just came up with on the fly. Um, let me know what you think of that. I'm really looking forward to seeing where you go with this project. Uh, if I've made you second guess anything that throws out a thousand pages of work, I'm sorry. I <laughs> hope you can forgive me. Um, thanks a lot, Sam. Let me know if you have any questions and, uh, I'll talk to you soon.